there. Sir from 17 once again. This is a balls deep of the new Sniper Ghost Warrior game. This game is called Contracts, I believe, and it is set out in a slightly different way to the ones that I played. Way back when I played Sniper Ghost Warrior 1 and 2, there were games that had the right idea sniping, advanced ballistics, the Coriolis effect, all of those cool things when it comes to shooting and infiltrating and assassinating. But the gameplay was always kind of janky. AI was bad. The games were like hit and miss on difficulty. Some were brutally difficult because mechanics just didn't work. And just... They looked the part, but they didn't quite have that quality when it came to playing the part. This new one, uh, I did the first level on the hardest difficulty, and I can report that the AI and the stealth seem to work a lot better, and the ballistics on shooting seems to be a lot easier now, because a lot of the highlights that help you out usually get removed on the hardest difficulty, but didn't on this. And for a bit of contrast, I'm going to run through on normal to see if there is a difference when we do this right now, but before we do that, I'm just going to go into the settings, and I'm going to go into the video components to see what you can mess with. And uh, as you can tell, going into the advanced options here, there's a couple of things you can do. There's not too much. You can go all the way to very high. I'm testing something when it comes to getting stutters on my recordings. So I've kept the details to high for the purposes of this. I don't think it's going to make a difference, but uh, it'll be interesting to see whether or not I get a result. Not too much to mess with. Game itself seems to look pretty pretty, which is always good. And what I'll do, I will uh, go into maybe the contracts menu and pick the Altai Mountains, this area here, because how this game works, guys, is instead of following a linear progression of missions like you did before, you're going to be picking these locations, and these locations are going to work like a sandbox akin to something like Hitman or Ground Zeroes, where there's a lot of things to do in these locations, and each of them will get you different things. So if you notice here, on this one, I destroyed test results, apparently. I was just exploring the map. I didn't really know what I was doing. But if you look, there's stealing samples, there's eliminating Dimitri, there's find client spies, downloading plans. And then when you go into the, the contract details over here, there's way more stuff you can build on, on ticking off on the list. And it does look a lot like the most recent Hitman with, you know, all the stuff you could do in those missions. But let's, let's jump into this so I can show you the game. And I uh, don't really care about that. But here we go. These are the difficulties. I played on that. Game difficulties increased, enemies are much more aware of the player, they spot the player easily in the open and hear him from greater distances, enemy weapon damage is increased. I'm going to play on this to see if there's any real difference. Greetings, Seeker. On this mission, your primary target is Dmitry Ivanovsky. He is a former Russian Armed Forces General. He earned the nickname Bio Ivanovsky during the Second Mongolian War due to his persistent use of both chemical and biological weapons. He is first cousin to the Siberian Prime Minister Nergui Kurchatov. During the Siberian War of Independence, Ivanovsky defected from the Russians to join his cousin. Kurchatov gave him the notorious Altai-24 Soviet Military Research Facility as thanks for his support. Our intel for this mission comes from an agent planted in the facility. Before our source went dark, his intel specified that Ivanovsky had completed human trials of his bioweapon. We understand that Kurchatov plans to use the weapon to secure Siberia's disputed border territories. The General's plans are stored on an encrypted military-grade laptop. Find the package, hack it, and obtain those plans. The weapon's test results must be destroyed. Infiltrate the main bunker and upload a virus to the mainframe. Find our informant if you can. We need to know if they're still alive. Above all else, find and terminate General Ivanovsky and recover any samples of the weapon. Stay focused, Seeker. As you can see, though, there's quite a lot of stuff to do, you know? It's quite fully realized. You can tell that they've de they're definitely a fan of, of what the Hitman series is doing. 
It's weird that it says press the space bar to start during the cutscene and the loading bar. It's, are you trying to tell me to skip your shit? What is this? You know? I always find it interesting when they're like, we made all this fancy stuff, let's get rid of it. So the audio balance is interesting because these guys are talking but you can't hear much because the chopper just went over Modern Warfare style. Anyhow. So, here's your big sandbox. You can see there's a lot of chromatic aberration going on on the screen. The game itself is decent looking. And... Start with a snipper. Always good. So this is interesting, right? I've been getting recording stutters on games that run beautifully. This game doesn't run beautifully. This game is actually stuttering in the game. Oh, the zoom sensitivity. So, you see when you aim here, guys, you see how there's that droplet that moves down to show you the white line? That's on the hardest difficulty. And that's essentially, when you calibrate everything, that's where the bullet's going to go. And the problem with it is, all you then really have to do is calculate the distance. Which I find to be really bizarre, considering that on the hardest difficulty you shouldn't get that. But it still gives it you, which I thought was really, really weird. Anyhow, first couple of guys to take on. That must be some kind of lure. I've got an AK. I've got a pistol. Look at those AK iron sights. Functional iron sights. My god. First person shooters with functional iron sights. They said it couldn't be done, right? Where did those guys go? Did they disappear? Well, let's have a look. Got this guy over here. You can loot his body. Movement feels quite heavy in this game. When you go into the looting mechanic, it, it gives you stuff on the right hand side. It's good for getting your ammo back on the hardest difficulty because you don't start with a lot of it if you want to shoot people and I shoot people in most games so dump the bodies where you want to dump them. You can be a little strategic with that. It's a nice feature. You can swap your gun out for his gun if you want to. More looting. UI is pretty simple and basic but you know it gets the job done. I quite like it. Additionally, there is a challenge for killing Dimitri within 30 seconds of starting the mission, so I imagine there's some way of seeing him really early on and taking him out. Which is pretty cool. Couple guys over there just walking past the fence. Satisfying sounds. You know, standard sniper stuff. I don't know if you always want to go in the same way on some of these or if it's if it's about finding that correct path and that sexy path you'll notice that it's doing a lot of checkpointing when you get discovered or something goes wrong if you restart checkpoint it will load from where that triangle was so it's really generous I'm definitely a fan of the flexibility of the checkpoints because it lets you masterfully do each segment without worrying too much but here is kind of the the tried and tested stuff in this game there's a way to mark people to tell you like what distance, so here we go so now that I've marked him it tells you his distance 134 meters, that guy's 109 these guys are in between it contains critical data from but the good thing about doing this you see is when you I do that, was tea. when you aim at this guy you now know the metric of where you have to aim for his distance because the lines below the scope are 100, 300, 500 in increments so we have to aim in between 100 and 300 and then make sure that line hits that guy obviously we can't do it now oh no he went inside but as long as we put him there and we put it where it sways there is a button to hold your breath but I'm not it's shift Whoops. so that just didn't seem to work did it interesting that seemed like that was the correct distance there we go I don't know why the bullet went weird just then, but you get a little cinematic showing you your your shot. And some of the difficulty of playing these games usually is, is, is getting the distances of that shot, but because of that white line, it just kind of enables you to really... I don't know what that is. Or oh, some kind of vision mode. Whoops. Whoops. Does he know? 
Does he set an alarm off? There you go. So I can show you as an example. So you fuck up, you go, I don't want it to be like that, we'll retry. And it'll retry from where the last triangle was. And there you go, you've got a handy little checkpoint. You don't have to take these people on if you don't want to. I don't know if there's a point to, to snipping them all, I just wanted to show you an example of the, the long range stuff. But this is the vision pulse you've got, like the Batman mode or the the Deus Ex Machina mode or whatever. It's kind of interesting. It's useful for pointing out barrels and stuff. There's a nice underwhelming explosion. There's everybody getting all... Here we go. Another one of these special shots. But you can kind of tell, can't you? It's a game that's got its heart in the right place, but it shows the signs of not quite being that, that top tier. Some nice destruction on the face there. It's very much like Sniper Elite in, in some ways, where Sniper Elite is not a very good game. It's an average game that does what it does really well, but what it does is not really strong enough to carry a full game, so when you play, you, you kind of wonder what the hell you're supposed to do. Hey, we've got an APC. Does he know? Got a guy getting off the APC. Another guy getting off the APC. But you see how it's kind of this sandboxy stuff's happening, stuff is changing, stuff is expanding. Like they're all going to do their thing. We're not going to mess with that. We're going to come over here and continue on the the exploration tour of just kind of moving around. Because you don't have to shoot your gun like a lunatic like I'm doing. If you want to, you can you can really stealth around and and probably get it all done with the knife. Do it like Leon would have done it. But, see, like, these guys are uh, sweeping up that way. So we're just going to come over here. But so far, the difficulty seems very similar to the hardest one that you can pick. It seems very comparable. This reminds me, whenever I play levels like this, when there's the trees and the snow and the mountains, I always think of Cliffhanger. I think I'm going to watch Cliffhanger tonight. I've been thinking about it. I've just been watching Rambo movies. And I have this problem, right? In my brain, I really want to like Rambo 3 because it's stupid and it's a literal cartoon character the whole way through. It's like a fucking serial for children. Only it's, you know, talking about the Cold War and killing Russians and everything. Afghanistan and the Taliban before they were the baddies. When, they were, when we were training them and giving them weapons and stuff. But when I watch it, I just find it to be so bad. <laughs> and the action's good. And Sylvester Stallone's hair is good and... You know, it's like the height of his arrogance and ego. But I just... Like, First Blood I love. That is a movie that stands up and you can watch it right now. And it's just... Am I gonna... Oh, be careful. And it's just superb. Rambo, First Blood Part 2 is still good, you know. It's still got the damaged soldier trying to make a difference, you know. Trying to get away from his, his worsened nature and all that kind of stuff. But then the third one just goes full retard. And you'd think I'd like it, because I like a nice dumb action movie, but I don't. <laughs> and it really irritates me, because I want to like it, you know? I always get... I did, I've did. i done it twice now. I get this impulse to be like, maybe Rambo 3 is not as bad as I remember it being. Because here's the fun thing, right? When I was a kid, I still hated Rambo 3. <laughs> you're supposed to like the shitty movies when you're a kid, right? I didn't. I still saw through its bullshit at the time. I don't know how. I was a genius, of course. Because I really like Rambo 4, and Rambo 4 is just, you know, gritty, brutal, you shouldn't go in this place, you're all naive, they went in the place, they're naive, I'm going to get them out now and kill everybody with a fucking browning gun or whatever it was. So we got a guy just over there that we can look at with our Beanox, mark that dude, keep cruising forward. And I'm, I watched the most recent Rambo, which was, I expected it to be absolutely awful. But I, I enjoyed it, you know. Is it racist? Almost definitely. <laughs> Does it make you want to go to Mexico on your holidays? Fuck no. It makes you never want to go near Mexico ever in your life. But that's what From Dust Till Dawn did to Mexico when I was a kid. So I am already never going to Mexico ever. <laughs> and I'm sure it's a beautiful place. But yeah, I'm gonna watch I'm gonna watch Cliffhanger. And for whatever reason I, I will never love Rambo 3. A couple it's guys over here. Styles. A quick reaction force. Can you wipe them out I wonder what would happen 
if I hit that barrel with the rifle. Do you th oh, that guy's all armoured up and shit. So they don't know where the shot comes from. That was an explosion. I'm hit. Damn it. That barrel hit that guy. Did you see that? <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> I've never killed one of the armoured guys because I avoided it on the hardest difficulty thinking that you probably couldn't. But as you can see, they're all kicking off. They don't really know what's going on. There's another one of those tanks. He's just chilling. What I really like about this so far, for a game that isn't, you know, super well established and, and super mechanic mechanically, is that it's all kicked off after me hitting that barrel, but it's localised. There's not a massive flare in the air and everybody's running after me, coming trying to kill me. There's just these guys like, what the hell's going on? It enables you to feel like you can move through the environment and it makes the environment feel like an actual biodome. Oh, 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 oh. Do they know? What? Dude, that eyesight for normal was legit. That guy's the best. They need to give that guy a raise. How the fuck did he see me? I don't think they saw me that fast on the hardest difficulty. Maybe I picked the wrong one. Anyway. There's also some platforming in this. See, you can climb down with the wires. You can climb up with, with the wood like that. See if I can showcase it for you. Give you people are people are being mad alert right now. Quite a lot of platforming and it's it's unusual, so if you watch, you can look around and he's got his old grips going and it doesn't look half bad for first person platforming. You know, it's not mentally taxing or, or meant to be difficult, but as far as a feature goes, I don't remember doing that in the in the last one, so I thought that this was kind of a cool touch. <coughs> the committing to the first person perspective, and I think it's a nice nice feature. I welcome it. Bit of platforming to give you some verticality, to give you some more strategic reconnoitering perspectives. So over there, that's where the place is that I infiltrated on the hardest difficulty and I put the virus in. Over there it's a base full of cameras and you sneak up a building site, there's tons of girders. But if you look, you've got the Aurora Borealis bit above us. We've got all the, the pipes and there's, there's there's like tons to look at and see. And this is only one of, I think, six environments. So if you love the idea of scouting out a locale, learning all the, the tricks and the shortcuts and the where to go, where people are, what the patterns are, what the routines are, then I think you're probably going to have a good time with this. My issue with it is... It's a series that I always liked, but never hit its mark for me. And it's gone in a direction that I respect, but I don't want. Also, you need to be careful going in the water. The water will kill you, because of course it's freezing, which I think is a really nice touch. I was climbing on these pipes and using them to traverse, because you can get across some interesting stuff by just climbing on the pipes. You have to do it in a particular fashion, though, or it doesn't seem to work. Got a handle over here. Can't seem to climb the fences. Don't know what melee is, but it ain't doing it. There is a distract mechanic, I think. You can throw some items. Need to be careful here, because not entirely certain where I am, not entirely certain where the dudes are. In the bottom left, you do have a map, which can help you out. Obvious reasons. Music's kicking up. I think I know this river. I ended up going down a river and nearly freezing my ass off doing it, but it felt kind of immersive and survivally. and there's a guy up there. Just kind of chilling out with his torch. I think I went that way across that pipe and then round the side. We can go on the ground way, see, see where this leads to. But I think this game is... Ooh, that's a torch. Available. There's a guy directly in front of me. Available right now. Two guys in front of me. Twenty-eight meters. Man down. Shit. Shit. These tangles are definitely looking for someone. It could be our informant. Find him before they do. Not entirely certain why that second shot missed, but you know, I apparently didn't do it correctly. Ooh, that noise! Whenever trees make that noise, I always feel like it's a throwback to the predator's rattle. Anybody else? And if it is. GG. I, I approve. Something's over here, 35 meters to my left. I reckon there's going to be one of those sugar puff guys. I can hear movement. Like a watchtower. The sensitivity when you lay down is kind of bum. 
That's just a, a wooden rattle, that one. Maybe it's not an homage to... Heard somebody on my right. See if we can pop this guy down without repercussions. I got loads of ammo. When you play on the hardest difficulty, you, you come into this mission with like five rounds. You have to loot the bodies. And the body... Look at this. Huh, it wouldn't go up the rock. And the bodies give you like one bullet each. The ammo is way more scarce. Which I think is a good idea. Make you value your rounds. Let's have a look over here. See what we've got. Got a couple of lamps. The J.J. Abrams lens flare thing. I don't really know what you would call that. Obviously J.J. Abrams didn't invent it. But you see it a lot in his movies. Particularly in the Star Trek uh, movies that he made. It's got a lot of chromatic aberration on it. And I don't really understand how it works because we're seeing it when we can't see the lights sometimes and I'm a big fan of that effect when I went to university I I did a project where I used that effect for my uh, visual effects because I really like the whole aesthetic you know the the Kane and Lynch 2 how a camera interpolates what our eyes do and how light is uh, how light is interpreted by a machine essentially it's through the lenses and everything it's cool Something I enjoy a lot. But in this game, it just comes across as a little... It's really intense and really confusing sometimes. Like, that one barely does it. But that one over there is cutting through trees. Like, you know when you think of that lens flare? In reality, wouldn't it just be... be you hear that? There's a dude... This guy's so loud. That shit was so loud, dude. It interrupted my goddamn conversation. <laughs> but you see what I mean? You feel like you're moving around a biodome. Hey, look at this. He's got a shotgun. And it has a horrendous iron sight. <laughs> With a ghost loop, which I really don't like. Can we go over here? And a torch. It's kind of interesting. It's like Doom 3 all over again. It'd be cool if you could climb the tree. Oh, I'm in the tree. Wow. Wow, they put no collision on this tree for some reason. That's unusual. Maybe they didn't think I'd, you'd do that. Do little trees have collision? Yeah, I'm certain they do. What? That's awesome. No collision on trees. At least you never get stuck. I respect that. Now, this one. This one has collision. This one doesn't. Huh. Maybe the fake trees. Maybe it's an easter egg. That one doesn't. That one doesn't. Is that one? Yeah, these ones do. How bizarre. Maybe they forgot. I might have to send them an email. Yo, guys. You forgot these trees, dog. Near the crows. Interesting setting. I wish I'd unlocked more levels so I could show you a different setting to kind of juxtapose this with. But in, in all honesty, I don't really want to play this game. You know? It's not a bad game. In fact, I think they've done a good job. I think if you like Sniper Ghost Warrior, I think that this is going to be awesome for you. Because it's it seems like a good step forward. But I'm just not in the mood for it, you know? Can I show you the water effect, maybe? This doesn't count. It must be only water that you submerge in. So if I submerge in this, maybe it gets a bit deeper. Siberia yeah, there you see. In this climate, I don't doubt it. Straight up rexure. I quite like that UI effect as well as your life goes down. You know, as it bleeds away with the white and the, the colour and the number changes. For a simple hood, I quite like the the fonts and the, the white. It's nice. Makes a difference, doesn't it? I'm not the biggest fan of the, the minimap segment, but the other segments, I like the kind of Spartan approach to it. I think it's cool. But yeah, if this had come out when I was in a, a stealthy mood, I think I would have been all over this. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to cover it like this, and I'm hoping that this video doesn't stutter too much. If you're wondering what those stutters are, guys, it's OBS having problems. And... I'm trying to mess with the the quality to fix it without losing quality and it's it's difficult 
The easy solution is to get a separate PC to capture things and have a two PC set up like a lot of streamers do. But unfortunately that's an expense I can't afford right now. And nor should I need to in, in reality. Like, there's no reason for it to be doing what it's doing. And hopefully I'll be able to figure it out. Because my CPU is good. And OBS is... Is decent. Is this where we started? I think it is. Have we gone full circle? Ah, so you could have gone down there and into the forest instead of coming this way. Yeah, and this is the fence. So we've just done a, a nice little loop. One thing that's kind of respectable is there doesn't seem to be any kind of indication of where he is. So if you look on the map here, we've got all these different target areas, the red one. So this is this is where it wants you to be. We explored. That's the area I fired into. That's the area I snuck around. You can fast travel? Jesus Christ, I didn't know you could fast travel. That's crazy. So they want you to look there for their plans. Interesting how it changes perspective when you, you click on the different things. But it's fully committing to a stealthy sandbox. And I don't think it's doing a terribly bad job. I think it's doing pretty damn good, all considered. Should we go, and, uh, go out in a blaze of glory, ladies and gentlemen, so I can put a exclamation? The, the jump is really floaty. You've probably noticed that. It's kind of weird. In a game that's grounded in realistic ballistics and the jump is like a Spartan jump, very strange. But let's see if we can introduce these people to some shotgun diplomacy. What if I can fuck with the NPC? I think there's a guy in that building. Can I get in this? That'd be fun if I could. But it'd be nice if there is more than one way to play this, because of course you can stealth it, you can snipe it. Can you go balls to the wall and murk it with shotguns? Is there anything even in here? Oh, you can hide in lockers. We Metal Gear Solid 2 now. I've only got seven rounds. Wow. This is... I mean, it does a lot of damage when you're close, which is kind of what shotguns should do, right? That's a V to take down. Dude, you get killed really quick. That's awesome. I like that the, they don't want you to be a Rambo. Because it means that... Like, if Darkseid Phil were to play this game, he couldn't just run past all the enemies like a bitch, like he usually does. And I respect that. Where is the checkpoint when we do this? Is it nine miles out in the sticks? Let's have a look. Oh, no. It, uh, it updates the checkpoints, then. What an unusual shotgun. Anyhow, ladies and gentlemen. That was uh, Sniper Ghost Warrior Contracts, I think it's called. Let me bounce out to the... to the menu... And hopefully it'll it'll tell you exactly what it is. Or maybe it won't because that closed the application. I hate it when that happens. Lol. Anyhow, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you had a good time. If you like Sniper Ghost Warrior and you're looking for more of that sniper stealth goodness, then this one is a strong installment from what I can see. Thank you for watching, and you take care now.